Welcome back to Q Dads. I'm Ben, and yes, if like me, you've spent the past several hours binging Three Body Problem and now spend every waking moment twitching at the curtains for alien life. Well, I'm here to deep dive into the series and hopefully put your worries of extraterrestrial life behind you. I'm going to touch on some of the biggest talking points of the show and discuss my favourite moments from each episode, including the heartbreaking scenes from episode 5, which really affected me in more than one way. I actually had a tear in my eye. And of course, no book spoilers here, you are safe. Everything we discuss is based on the show and the show alone. Now, the series itself has a great sci-fi concept stemming around the three-body problem, the unsolvable equation based around three stars and the effects they have on a planet caught in each of their gravitational pulls. Overall, the series was brilliant, plenty of science, which got the brain ticking, plenty of gory scenes that made me cringe at times, and the humour was spot on. Now, touching on the humour for just a moment, did I enjoy this so much because I'm British? And some of the references related to the UK. Fucking Vodafone. You know what? I think so. And for me, this made the show that little bit more enjoyable. Wong's character was phenomenal with those quick one-liners. And of course, Jack and Will were just a comedy duo. I must admit, the very first episode was a little bit too much for me. The introduction of so many characters and storylines in such a short time frame seemed like we ourselves were in the chaotic era struggling to make sense of it all. But, as we move through episodes 2, 3 and 4, the story started to make sense and the science had me gripped. Certain elements of it, like the dehydration aspect, was just fascinating and the whole game mode to access and understand these other civilizations was the most gripping part of the show for me. Even the introduction of famous historical figures like Genghis Khan, Newton, Galileo and even Alan Turing The whole concept of the human computer was mind-blowing. Watching these millions of people moving their flags to represent a series of ones and zeros. It reminded me of those mad moments when people create computers in Minecraft using redstone. I wonder if it could run Doom. Then we move to episode 5. And wow, oh wow. This for me was the best episode of the series so far. And here's why. It seemed for a moment that all the human pieces on the chessboard seemed to be in the right position with all the main characters. We then get Augie, who has created her nanofiber and uses it against the Judgment Day vessel. This is where I got a real eerie feeling as the ultra strong wire cuts through the ship. And yeah, at first it was great to see, especially with those Game of Thrones style gore leaving nothing to the imagination. But then, enter the kids. For the whole intense scenario, I was hoping they wouldn't show us the death of a child. And although they didn't, I couldn't shake it from my mind, leaving an unusual feeling in my stomach. It was difficult to watch, especially as they added the intense screams of people on the boat, with the immediate silence of those watching it unfold. And then, the icing on the cake was showing us the severed child's foot when searching through the wreckage. And of course, We ended that episode on the big reveal of the Santi with the eye in the sky and calling all of humanity bugs. For the rest of the series, it built up rather nicely and by the time the final episode came round, I didn't feel like it was a final one. There was no big build up. It's like the show had reached its peak and this peak continued to stretch as I became invested in each episode. The series then ended in a great way and not only did the mission fail and send a brain and some seeds, hurtling through space to God knows where, but the Santi reveal themselves to Mr. Ward, informing him that they're always watching until the day he dies. Now, I want to touch on a couple of points here, the first being the wall facer. The fact that they have put the plot and the future of the show in Saul's head, with us not being allowed to know what he's thinking, is just mental. It seems, at the end, he did decide to become a wall facer, and keeps his true intentions to himself, but I'm not sure how this will turn out. He has to come up with a plan, but surely if any equipment is needed or resources, then people will start to understand what the plan is and then the Santee will figure it out too. Also, 
the reference at the end about bugs always surviving. This for me actually hints towards Augie, as we see her in the scene before adding a filtration system to her well. Through the use of her nanofibers, she has figured out a way of filtering water to be the purest it's ever been. Is her technology the key to human survival in years to come? Is she humanity's last hope? Now, we need to talk about the Santee. Firstly, what do they look like? They show themselves as humans for our understanding, yet there has been a few references to bugs, tentacled creatures, but actually we never really get a true indication of what they could be. And secondly, and more importantly, they say throughout the series that it will take them 400 years to get there, but in the last scene they say to Mr Ward, we will see you soon. And a moment just before that, they alluded to tampering with his cryogenic freezing method, insinuating that it wouldn't work. Does this mean that our science was wrong, or somehow the Santee manipulated it to make us think that they would be 400 years, when in fact they would be a lot sooner? Is this all part of their larger plan for us to think quick and solve problems and potentially solve the unsolvable three-body problem after all? Uh, I also want to touch on Tatiana for a moment because she starts off by bringing the group together. But by the end, she's all alone and now with a golden helmet. What is the Santee going to show her and what information is she going to get to help with the upcoming war? Now again, We've not touched on any of the books here, so I have one final rogue theory for you. There was a book shown in one of the final episodes with Wenji called Fermi's Paradox. Now, Fermi's Paradox is about the lack of evidence for extraterrestrial life, but also the high probability based on the higher similarities of other stars and planets. With the phrase, if life is so easy, someone from somewhere must have come calling by now. Is this a reference to the Santee coming? Or does this indicate that advanced extraterrestrial life has already been to Earth and is currently residing, ready to strike the Santee when they arrive? Anyway, what a show this was, and I'm so glad that they made this. Every episode, probably other than the first, was actually top-notch. A true masterpiece, in my opinion. And the right level of humour, mystery, science, action and gore all the way throughout but again, it's not always about me, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think that we will see the Santee in Season 2? And whose plan will be the one to save us? Will it be Sol? Will it be Augie? Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And of course, we'll catch you Wednesday with the finale of Constellation. Take care, guys.